Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Under the Hill. We are going to try and do one more load in the mixed feeder over there because I'm not happy with what we did already. We did a little bit, we did one load, but I'd like to be able to get some hay out of the hayloft and it won't load into the mixed feeder. So we're going to need to try something a little bit different with that. So what I figured that we would do is we would get... Well, that tractor we will use, uh, but we also want to get that trailer. We want to take that trailer and we want to put that one in underneath. And then we can unload a little bit. And then after we've done that, we should hopefully be able to um, like tip it out onto the ground. And then after we've tipped it onto the ground, we can then spoon it into this beastie over here using our front loader. So the plan is, I keep doing that. You go backwards with reverse pedal and then you go forwards with the forwards pedal, with the accelerator. You go backwards with the brake pedal. So then when I'm, I'm reversing and I want to stop, I then press the brake pedal harder and I, I go backwards faster. There's, there's the one little bit that I don't like about pedal configuration. Um, but anyway, that's, that's just a minor detail. So we'll just come over here and we will grab this trailer here and then we will see about loading up. Now we can put quite a bit into this trailer, so I don't want the full trailer load. And we're going to... That machine over there takes 16,000 litres. So if we say we want roughly 8,000 litres of hay, then there's going to be 4,000 litres of silage and 4,000 litres of straw, in theory. So is this going to work? We're going to just bring this one around here first and bring it up to about there. And then we can back this one up. Once we've done this, we're going to unload the last of the grass here and we'll probably just stick all of it in to the hayloft actually it'd just be easier if we do that right now the, the other problem that we've got here of course is that we can't get under that it, it doesn't go if i ram it nope 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 so we're gonna have to come off to move it slightly to the side i might be able to yep there we go <laughs> i can sort of fit but i can't quite fit ah there we go you just got to get the point of it off to the side of it right now i should be able to fill yes I'm filling with the hay. So for whatever reason, you can't load using this one and the other machine. I'm not quite sure why, but I'm assuming that there is some kind of logical explanation in there somewhere. So we've got, I'm going to go to about 7,500, just over, there we go. Right, and we'll take this out, and this little lot is going to tip onto the ground, and then we will spoon it in using our front loader. So I need to just back it round this corner here. I back it round. Uh, I think I can back it round quite sharp enough. If I bring it in here a minute, and we'll try and back it round a bit more. Do a bit more backing. See, that's the problem. Is that's as sharp as I can turn it. This, um, for some reason, this tray. The irritating thing is that sometimes the tractors don't let you turn as sharp as you ought to be able to in real, or as you would be able to in real life. And it does kind of slow things down a little bit. It does make it a little bit difficult. But anyway, we'll tip this lot here. We've got a nice big lot here. Actually, that might be too big a heap to get round. Um, that could be fun. That could, that, that could certainly prove interesting. And we'll bring this one... Actually, I don't want to leave this one here, do I? That's going to just be in the way if we put it there when we come out of the, uh, the run there from the cattle. So we'll bring this one up here. And we'll move this one down here completely out of the way. So this one's going to be completely over here, out of the way, and not going to be interfering in any way. I'm going to try and put this one here. I'm going to leave it running like that. And I can just squeeze past. I'm going to have to try and get round this big old heap with this tractor. Um, once I've got the first bucket full past there, we should be all right. I reckon that if we bring... If we try and sort of scoop from the heap on this side over here... We should be all right to do this. We can just lower down there. I mean, yeah, we are going to end up driving on the heap a little bit to start with, but uh, we can live with that. That is something I can live with. We, we, we'll just say that we got clean tyres, and then it'll be fine. A bit like driving around on a silage pit. You know, sometimes when you're picking up a load of silage, if you're doing a lot of it, you make sure that you've got lovely clean wheels, and then you can drive over the food, and it doesn't really matter. So we're going to do that. We'll bring that one in there. What I'd like you to do today, because we don't have any question this week, we're moving to Stop and Back next week, and it's going to be our very first episode there on Monday. 
So what I'd like you to do today is in the comment section, I'd like a few suggestions of little jobs that you'd like me to do when we get to stuff and back. What would you like me to do to start with? Is there anything in particular you'd like to see there when we move there? Would you like me to start off with, say, 30 cows or something like that? You know, would you like me to start the map with some animals? I haven't downloaded and looked at the map yet, so I'm not really sure what we start with. And I will be sticking with the story that we were talking about, where I'm an on-farm consultant working for Agco, and I turn up, I have a briefcase full of money, and I am able to help these farmers out because uh, we're, we're sort of, we're mixing this. On-farm consultant, I'm advising the farmers on what to spend, but I'm also turning up with a pile of my own money that I can then um, give the farmers some cash because they've uh, they, uh, won a competition. So there's a few of you who sort of um, fed into this little backstory that we've got. The Agco one in particular I did really like. Um, I think I tried butchering... Um, your your name yesterday is it um, is it um, Nate's I think it's Nate's I'm probably I'm probably getting this wrong the thing is the way that I have to do the recording in order to be able to fit everything in each week is that I need to record all three of these episodes each week before I actually get to see uh, before the first one goes live so I can only act on what you say and what I read in the comments the following week. I can't act on anything you've said in yesterday's episode um, for the duration of the rest of this particular series that we're running right now because I'm just not going to see it. it. It won't exist to me. So uh, there is that to keep in mind. When, when you're telling me stuff, um, just bear in mind that I'm not able to see anything until... I can't act on anything until the following week. I do read it all. I don't always comment on it. I'm not always able to comment on it. Um, but I do read everything, and I do pay attention to what is said. Now, we've got some hay in there. Uh, we've got almost 8,000 hay, and I'm putting in silage now. So two loads of this can be 3,600 silage. I'm going to wrap my tractor around this wall here, because, you know, why not? It's not the way to behave. It really isn't. Okay. The biggest problem with this clamp here is getting the bucket into it. I think what we're going to have to do is drive down through this way and then come up round so how many loads have I put in? I'm not entirely sure how many loads i put in we've got 456 litres per bale so I'm going to go and put straw bales in now, we want to put 8 bales of straw, that's what we did last time we put 8 bales of straw in and that worked really well I'm going to try and do this a little bit differently this time, I've not done this before I'm curious if I can load the bales into this bucket and then move them on up. And I'm not really sure how we can do this. I can I can put them up like that. Uh, and then they're dropping... The problem is, is they're dropping through the front of the buckets. Yeah, they're, they're not actually holding in the bucket. The bucket is not like a, a static in-game object or anything. So it's, it's not really going to work very well. We're going to have to try and throw these. Okay, that's definitely not going to work. Uh, well, it's not going to work from here anyway. I'm going to grab eight bales and I'm going to sling them down that way. So there's two, three, and eight. And now I can bring them down this little next bit and we'll see if we can chuck them right in. Nope, still not close enough. I need to bring them to about that point. Still not close enough. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm multi-handle the bales. I, I probably would have been easier if I'd just gone and moved that tractor. But I've committed now. This this is what happens, is, is you start something and you commit and you don't really want to change your mind because, um, well, you, you decided to try and do it like this. Let's see if I can chuck them in from here. Still can't get them in. What about from here? I'll start chucking them over the top now. Nope, that does actually seem to be about right. So I'll bring them all to that point there. I've, I've chucked them all too far forward. Oh, no. About there. Oh, that one went in. This should be the last one, unless I've horribly miscalculated and chucked them all over the other side. I haven't. Excellent. Right. We've got a whole load of stuff in here. Let's have a look. And it's all within the correct parameters. Miracles never cease. we still got room for one more little bit of silage in there. So we will... I mean, we could just leave it like this so that we use... 
less we, we use a lower percentage of silage but I mean our we're not doing this to save money we're doing this to look after our animals properly and so I'd like to be able to look after our cows so we'll go and get a little bit more silage there we go that is way too much we're only going to need half a bucket so I can back that one up there and then we'll bring this last little bit down and we'll tip it back into the clamp and we will be done and we can put this one in the next question is are we going to be able to get in there properly and actually get the stuff tipped out because we, we had trouble with this last time it didn't want to fit properly in there. I've got an idea for how we might be able to get in this time. But I'm not entirely convinced that it's going to work. So let's bring that one in there. And tip that one out. There we go. And I'm just going to leave this one down here for a minute. And I'm going to get stuck. So I'll do it like this. Right. We've got one full load. Now what I need to do is I need to get this full load into the um in, in into the cattle run and that's that's going to be a little bit more doing into the cattle pen there it's, it's going to be a little bit tricky because this tractor is a bit bigger than the voucher the voucher i think would actually move this one in with less difficulty than this one i was going to say easier it, it would do the job easier but i think easy is very subjective right now and may not necessarily be the word we want to use but I just had an idea. We do have room to drive in this way. Uh, I don't think there's quite room there, but I could bring it in up round here. Can I get in round there? I can't swing it in one take, but I can back this one up a little bit. If we reverse that one into there like that, and then we drive. There we go. Now we're talking. Yep. Yep, there we go. Bring that one in through there. And then this one, in he comes. And he's going to go in across there. Right, now i got to watch that front tyre. i got to watch the front tyre on the drinker. There's the drinker there. He's going in under it. Fits! <laughs> he did fit. He did sort of fit. And I've just ripped my exhaust pipe off on the downspout up there. We'll ignore that bit. We're going to completely ignore that bit because, quite frankly, this Fiat fits. That's all that counts. That is all that counts. It gets in here. Look, 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 look. We've done it. And now we're unloading. Um, okay, I, don't, I wish it wouldn't unload that side. You can't change the side that it unloads either. You can't, like, just alter the side of the animation. Let's have a look in here. We've got... There it is. Look at it. It's filling all the way up. This one is way full now. Way full. And that one's going to go and fill up a little bit as well. We could do with a little bit more grass in here, but I'm not too concerned about grass. Grass will be fine. But we won't worry about that. The rest of it is now full. And the cows are very happy ladies. They are very, very happy ladies. Now, if I come out of here, going that way doesn't work. We tried that before. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to try and come out this way like this. I think I may have done this last time, actually. The very last time we did it. And then I can go that way and then back out round here. There we go. Look at this. We're learning how to maneuver our machinery around our own yard. That is always a step in the right direction. If you're able to do your, you know, drive around your own yard, that is always a, a, a positive. It's, it's a step in the right direction. So let's bring that back there. There we go. Now, I was talking about possibly doing a bit of um, fertilizer spreading. I'm not going to do fertilizer spreading. At least not today. I don't really want to. And we're going to unhitch that one there. And then this one is going to stop here. Now, I would like a little bit more slurry. And I would like a little bit more manure. So what I'm going to do is with... The time has started speeding up a little bit. We're going to take another look up. I really love this hayloft. This hayloft is absolutely brilliant. It really is. Absolutely fantastic. I am really pleased that they've put this in here. And it really does look good. So anyway, we've, we've, got, we've got the hayloft. Now, over here somewhere, there is also slurry. Uh, slurry is on here. And we have 6,000 litres of slurry in here. And then down here, we've also got manure. But um, uh, manure, 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 manure. Um, 4,600. Right. 4,000 is not really enough to fill up the muck spreader that we've got. We've got the slurry tanker there. Where did I put the muck spreader? 
I pulled it out there somewhere, and I, I've, I've dumped it. Oh, I think I know. I think I put it across the road, didn't I? Yes. Right. So we'll worry about that one in the morning. The first job we're going to do, though, is a bit of slurry spreading, as we've got the slurry tanker is all hitched on. So we'll use the doits for this one, as it's already hitched on to the doits, and we will spread a little bit of slurry down on our arable field that we planted there. Uh, but we're going to do that first thing in the morning. Well, morning has broken, and apparently the blackbird has also spoken, but I've yet to hear him. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming he's over there somewhere, being being quite quiet about it. But any, anyway, anyway, we now have 10,000 litres of slurry, so we are going to leap elegantly back into the Deutz, which I ever so cleverly backed up into this corner up here. And we're going to start loading up our slurry tanker. We've got 10 thousand liters and I can't remember how much I can put into the slurry tanker I think we've easily got a full tanker load yes we have I think this one's like 8,000 liters in total so we get this one done first and then yes 8,000 so we've still got spare slurry should we need it for anything else I don't think we will so we'll come up round here and through here and then we head off down this hill down here and look that beautiful picture. I thought I'd already got a picture, but now I'm thinking that this is a better picture. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Right. I think that sort of says ancient power. Well, I say ancient classic power. We've got classic power there. Wow. Um, that crop field has grown considerably faster than I actually thought it would. It's done like two growth stages and I was hoping that it wouldn't. We do need to do some cleaning for the sheep and the cows. I'm not going to worry about that because we've already done that. And we, we do kind of want to get a move on. Um, so growth over here looks like it's... Uh, yeah, we, we, we've come along quite well on this. Let's just ignore that though. We're going we're gonna to spread slurry on here anyway. We're just going to pretend that overnight it hasn't become almost completely ripened. So we can start spreading with this one. This is one of these. Now, I've never actually used one of these. I've only ever used one that's got a backplate on it that sort of it, it jets it out onto this backplate. And then it hits that plate, which is at an angle. And so the slurry deflects off of the plate and then um, like sprays off of there in a fan shape out behind you. This one here, this one operates a little bit differently. It, it, so it sprays it in a slightly more concentrated, f um, like, well, not so much of a fan, but it, it does it slightly more concentrated. And it does do an even spread, but I have heard it said from people who've actually used them that it's not as good as the one that pumps it out onto a plate. Now, I don't know if that's true. I've not really talked to people about these very much. I must be honest, it's not not a conversation I've had and it's not I don't think it's something that I've actually talked about on here either so um, I don't actually know very much about them so anybody who's used a slurry tanker with this type of attachment on the back so that we're, we're doing it like this here you know with the rotating attachment on the back there and I can see how it works it sort of comes up and then the pressure of it is causing it to spin from side to side um, the pressure of the slurry coming up is, is causing the thing to spin from side to side of its own free will, really. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that there are all also ones that control the rate of twist or stuff like that. Uh, um, maybe it is done on a hydraulic basis rather than just the slurry itself forcing it from side to side. But looking at it, I'd say maybe it's just the slurry. Not quite sure. What are they like? Do they give an even spread? Are these things fairly reliable or is it better to have the one with the plate where it just forces everything out and up against the plate? If anybody could fill me in on this, I would be hugely appreciative. Right, we don't own the field up there, but we do own this bit of grass and this bit of grass has been ploughed. Most of the land on this map has been ploughed. Um, which is a good job we didn't set someone ploughing one of the other fields because he probably would have gone on and ploughed a huge great big area before we quite realized what was going on i'm just using up the rest of the slurry now just going to empty this one out and then i'm thinking we'll i was talking about doing a bit of forestry work with a pony and trap and yes i think that would be fun but i think i would prefer to get the muck spreading done first so we've got this slurry and we've had a go at this one we've seen it working in the field and it does look magnificent i'm very pleased that we've done this we've come out we've had a go uh, we're going to go and get our muck spreader next and we're going to load that one up 
uh, where we get it back to the yard and we get that one loaded. I'm going to put that one on the Fiat and then we'll load it up using the Valtra and then once we've loaded it we'll probably just park it up ready for the beginning of our next episode and it's in our next episode that we will go and spread the little bit of muck that we've got loaded up into it and then once we've done that then we will go and look at a little bit of forestry work we'll take our pony and trap and chainsaw and we'll go off to the forest somewhere and we'll find a few logs and we will load them up and that is how we're going to finish up this series at least that's the plan now as you all know my carefully laid plans very very rarely actually work out and come to fruition so we will have to wait and see so just bring this one in over here I also completely forgot about putting the rest of the um, grass up there to become hay so I'll do that a minute we'll stop that one we'll park that one up there we'll take this one here so we can have one final look at the twin wheel stayer before this one gets sent back to the person that owns it he's gonna come back and he's gonna pick it up so we've just parked this one here overnight which means that this grass in here will have already started to heat up by quite a bit because you just leave, you go out, you, you um, go and mow your lawn. For those of you who are unsure about this, go and mow your lawn. Put the clippings in a great big heap. I mean, it does depend how big your lawn is, I suppose. But yeah, put your clippings in a heap and then leave them. Just leave them overnight. And then come back to it the following day. So you're looking at 12 to 15 hours later. And... I was going to say, I was about to say stick your hand in the middle of it, but now I'm thinking don't just blunder in and stick your hand in the middle of it because something bad might happen. Um, it may be a little bit too hot for that. So what I'd actually recommend is you don't just plunge your hand into it. Carefully lift it up with garden fork or something like that and just feel the temperature of it. Maybe put your hand near it because it can get, especially in the sunshine, it can get so hot that it would literally burn your hand. If you run a hose pipe through a compost heap, you can use that to heat the water in the hose pipe quite effectively. It is really quite good at doing that. But anyway, I just wanted to just drive this one around just a little bit, just so that we could admire this stayer and this lovely Laylee Tygo. We will do a little bit more work with some more of these, but we're not going to be using stayer in our next map. That one is based in Germany, and a lot of people have been asking me if I could use some class vehicles while we're in Germany. Now, I have done an awful lot of work using uh, class combines. Now, I've, I've used class combines quite a bit. This one is beauty. I, I really do like this, the, the whole twin wheels on this thing. We'll see if we can get more twin wheels going in the next one. Um, but what I haven't done is I haven't really used class tractors. So I'm going to try to do that at least in Stappenbach. We're going to use a few class tractors. There's a, uh, at least two that are now on Mod Hub that I think are absolutely wonderful. And I'd really like to use them. So let me just do this. And we will phone up the dealership and we'll ask him to come and get... Well, it's not the dealership, um, is it? It's, no, it's, it's not the dealership at all. Um, no, the person that's coming to get these is the contractor who actually owns them. So he is now and collected those they're all done with and we're finished right next up we want the fiat and we need to go and get our muck spreader so we'll race off down here i love the sound of this fiat it does sound pretty brutal it, it sounds like it's got a bit of power it also sounds like it's done a lot of work in its time and you know it's he's earned his stripes this one has see those stripes down the side he's earned those he really has, through many, many hours of hard labour. That's why he now sounds a bit gruff, a bit rough around the edges. But my goodness, doesn't he have some stories to tell? We'll bring this one in back around here, and I will get this one positioned just so in the yard, and then we can start loading it up with the Valtra. Of course, the question is, where is the best place to get this one positioned so that we can load it up? And I'm thinking we want to back it up here, we want to get it as close to that pit as possible. So we need to bring it this way. And then we need to back it up like that. So it's round the corner. And that looks like it'd be a good spot for the loader. We don't want to jackknife the thing. But in real life, you could certainly move it back further than that. You could certainly turn it sharper than what I'm doing right there. You would be able to turn it quite sharp because the um, you'd have it so the arms aren't going to get in the way of it. Anyway. Let's just stop that one there a minute. And we can come on around here. My first concern, though, is we've got that little heap 
right in the way. So if we just use a little magic, and when I say use a little magic, what I mean is we're just going to pop inside for a quick cup of coffee and maybe a spot of bre late breakfast, however you want to word it. So once, once breakfast is, come on, we're still having breakfast. Still having breakfast. Still having a coffee. Coffee's very important. We better have some. Right, coffee is done. Slow that back down again. And then we can go and we can get our loader bucket down here. Get this bad boy in here. We've already emptied out the silage, so we're not going to need to worry about that. And we bring that one back up here and then round like that. I'm getting quite good at getting around this yard, even if I do say so myself. Of course, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knock down a barn or something, isn't it? That's, that's what's going to happen. Now, this is the bit that I'm more concerned about, is how am I going to load this? Because of the angle of it, it's, it's going to be quite difficult to get this just right. Especially with the angle of it, it's, it's going to make life more difficult to get in there and load it. But we can still do it. I have complete faith in us. And then we can bring this one up here. And we can start loading this one up. Excellent! Right, we are now actually loading our muck spreader. The only thing I would like is a side mounted chain rotor spreader which we don't have and also this is a little bit difficult because the, the pit's not very big and it's not very much, well it's not that it's not very big, it's quite steep going down into the pit and also there's not very much muck in there which is making it a little bit tricky for the bucket so maybe we'd be using a slightly different bucket or something on here in order to get this to work a bit better. I don't really know. I don't really want to tip any out. Once once I've got it in the bucket, I don't really want to remove it from the bucket. How much have we got in there now? I'll go up through here, I can take a look. Uh, we're saying seven, yeah, that's because it hasn't updated. It needs a tick to update to tell us how much we got in there now. We'll, we'll tick it along in just a second. But I'm doing this like two, three hundred liters at a time now, which is not how I really pictured it. Is there another muck pit? Is, is there one up the other end? Are we also able to get a bit of muck out the one at the other end? I'm wondering about that. I suppose it doesn't really matter. We, we, can, we can load some stuff up with this one as well as we can, except that I can't do it with this one because it's so steep now. This, this is what makes it tricky with this. Oh, there we go. I got another 600 litres on there. Uh, because of the, the way that the pit is sloped, we kind of need a lot more in there in order to be able to get it to work properly. But, I mean, we got enough in that trailer that we're able to do something with it. We come over to this side and do the same here. And just try and... Well, that didn't work. Let's try that again. There. Down we go. <laughs> 47 litres. And my issue now is that it's it does seem to be like going slightly through the bottom of the pit which is not great right i think that one is a case of we'd have to leave it for a little while for it to fill up some more so if we just stop that one there a minute it's still saying 7833 i'm just going to speed this up until it does a tick and then it updates and tells us how much we got on there there we go it's still 5000 in there i'm not convinced that it's all in here I'm not convinced it is all here. Let's just go and have a look at the map a minute and see if there is any more. This is where the other cows are. We've got the bar we've got the chickens over here. Let's just have a look over here where the pigs are and maybe is is there something around here? There might be I don't imagine that there is anything here because this is the pigs. It doesn't look like there's gonna be anything around here. So you've got the slurry there and the slurry fill level is on zero. Uh, that would that one there would be where the pig's muck is put out, but it's not for the cows. So let's go and have a look at the actual cow pasture up here. Another little spin around. Hello. <laughs> I love that. That's got to be from the previous iteration of the map from the FS15 version. That would be why it's doing that. We've got water here. This is where we've got to bring the water and put it in. And there is no muck up this end. Right, unfortunately, it does look like the muck, you've just got to let like a little bit start to accumulate in order to be able to get it out of the pit. 
that's fine. We can live with that. There are other ways of doing things. You could use like a um, conveyor belt system or something like that in order to load it up. I'm not actually going to worry about a conveyor belt system. I'm not that concerned about it, to be honest. Um, so we've got a bit in it. We've got 3,000 litres of manure in here. We've got 3,000 litres of muck ready to go. So we will be spreading that at the beginning of our next episode. And then when we've done that, we're going to try a little bit of forestry. Now, we do have, as one part of the forestry, we've got this bad boy up here. I wasn't going to worry about using any of this stuff here. I wasn't going to, like, get into doing the big forestry stuff here. I was going to leave this, and the forestry we do is just going to be the pony trap and a chainsaw. And then um, we'll maybe do a bit more involved forestry on a different map, but it's not going to be on this one. I love the fact that we've got a kid's playpen here in the middle of the um, the forestry area. That is... <laughs> That is absolutely brilliant. I think it's in case the employees get bored. I think more likely it's a case of this forestry area that they, they, they're manufacturing these items and then shipping them out. That that would be more like it. But anyway, that is all we've got time for today. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.